Uh, hi, I'm Fungagenda and I am going to be showing you how to build a sort of dubstep slash electro wobble uh, using Massive. Um, okay, so moving into uh, yet another of the uh, the cliched synthesizers, um, I I fell in love with Massive um, when uh, myself and Adam K did uh, Drift. Um, everyone associates this synth with dubstep, uh, rightfully so because it's pretty, you know it it, do, it is the dubstep synth, um, but. Everyone seems to use the again like there's there's a couple of bank, banks of, there's a couple of banks of presets and then one's called like massive retaliation or something like that and there's a, a, you know a lot of the big producers have done like uh, sound packs for them and stuff but no one ever you know or very few people ever seem to sort of like sit down and say you know well how do I go about you know making one of those sounds when I first heard sort of like some of the dubstep bass sounds that were coming out I was like you know wow this is like amazing sound design and stuff um, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how they were doing it you know like because I was thinking in terms of a, of you know of normal subtractive synthesis you know using using four oscillator you know four different waveforms the 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 saw the square the pulse and the sign or whatever the triangle and the sign and I, and I just couldn't get my head around how it was that I was supposed to be like making those sort of sounds and um, so I really kind of went in deep to it like you know I, I did it, obviously I didn't grow up with this kind of synthesis like I grew up with this type of synthesis so it was a real learning curve for me but once I once I mastered it I was kind of like actually this is pretty cool you know and, you, and, and it opens up a lot of um, a lot of different avenues, not just for doing dubstep sort of sounds, but also for doing, um, you know, uh, it, like, it sounds that evolve. I mean, you know, I've got a whole uh, a whole series of sounds that I've I've created for this, um, literally like screens and screens and screens of, of stuff, um, you know, and it, it can be. It can be as 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 gnarly and as guttural as a as a as a dubstep synth, um, right the way to stuff that's really. Um, yeah, I'm still on silent. Here we go. Um, right the way to stuff that's like very delicate and 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 you know sort of like uh, evolves. So like this is like a, a sort of a, a little um, like evolving waveform kind of thing. Uh, this is all kind of like you know it's, it's all based on um, on this the sort of the things that people use for the oscillators that people use for, for dubstep sounds but it's just being used completely differently um, I've also got things like uh, these uh, this bell patch which is like constantly it never repeats itself because it's got an oscillator and it's got a, an LFO driving one um, one oscillator constantly changing and then another LFO driving the LFO rate on uh, on the first LFO so sometimes it will be really muffled and then other times it will be like super bright um, one of the things that producers often overlook on this certainly from the house side of things probably not from the dubstep side of things because they you know seem to be more at home with this synth uh, than the house people do um is the use of macros um so like in this particular one you know when you're kind of when you're uh you know sort of messing around with that or whatever you can actually have the uh macro set to control multiple things all at once so that you don't have to have like three or four lines of control data just to do one thing you can just have one line of control data um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through some basic sound design on here as well that hopefully some people uh, at home will find useful um, 
I'm going to go for a wobble kind of sound because that seems to be the thing that, again, people are really, you know, into the idea of getting and whatever. So, um, the way I always start is I kind of look at all these ones over here. Like, I'm not going to use the modern talking one because that's the way everyone sort of goes for. So, um, I'm going to do something maybe. So, that's just straight off the Screamer um, uh, oscillator. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up uh, an LFO, but I'm going to put it on the wavetable position. Uh, so here we go. And then we're going to sync the LFO to eighths. do is I'm going to use one of the, you see like on the curves you've got like these, the four basic curves which is the sign, the uh, uh, saw, oh, well, the ramp I guess uh, is actually what that one is, uh, square and uh, triangle. Um, and so these are all kind of like, they each do a different thing. But also, if you go into here, you've got like a whole bunch of like really clever looking um, uh, waveforms that you can use. Uh, so I'm going to use one of the falling waveforms. And these are kind of really nice because they're good for the, uh, they, they kind of give you like, say, a smooth version, a smoothed out version of the ramp. So already it's kind of starting to sound like it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a wobble to it. I'm going to keep bringing this down here. Let's just turn a... So let's say that that's layer one. I'm going to turn the second oscillator on now. Uh, and this one, I'm going to change into a formant. So you can hear like the shape, the wavetable position switches between square and saw wave on this. And then the intensity one, like kind of pitches the, the sync of the formant. The, the, I don't know what you call it, but it sounds like sync when you use it on a, on a, um, uh, on a sync like this. Nero use a lot of stuff that sounds like that one uh, on, on some of their stuff. It's kind of cool. Again, I'm going to put the same um, the same uh, LFO. Now, one of the cool things on here is um, it has. You've got your envelopes here, like your four envelopes, but what a lot of people don't, you know, again, I say a lot of people, like most of the people I've encountered don't know about this, but there's also an internal envelope just here. Um, and what you can do with this is that LFO can have an attack time. So you see how that's like, it comes straight in, but it's kind of like a little bit kind of, it can be a little bit clicky and a little bit raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply the internal envelope here um, to the uh, to the amp amount. So I'm just going to push that up like that. So you see you can have and it gradually gets more. So I'm just going to. So you see you've got a little bit of a pause now. Before it kicks in. So that's kind of cool. Um, then one of the things I've, I, I, like one of the other important things about these sort of sounds is, um, is the modulation oscillator. Um, again, like it's kind of trial and error, but like basically the way that this modulation oscillator works is very similar to the way that the mod OSC on this works um, in that you have an oscillator pitch 
that you can either offset or, or have as an octave or whatever you want and then that sort of like tells you how quick it the, you know the phase is sort of that's how much of the phase is going to be applied that's how quick the oscillator is going but it does it in terms of notes rather than in terms of, of, a, of a rate like it, so instead of doing it in milliseconds or doing it in eighth notes or whatever you actually do it as a transposition in relation to the to the other oscillators the cool thing about this is the way is when you uh, apply it so let's say we're going to put like the phase oscillator on um, on oscillator one, so straight away you get that gnarliness. But then what you can do is you can you you can actually go. All right, we're going to put like minus two octaves on that, and you know kind of what it's going to get because you can hear the individual uh, waves of the oscillator. You know, if you take it right the way down to say 64, that's really slow oscillation. So you can be kind of like super precise with how you want the oscillations to be like you know it, I think for for this either like minus 12 or 12 is good uh, minus 12 or 0 is going to be good so let's just try it as a as a there we go see that sounds cool to me like I think that's like I think that's cool. so then you of course you can all, all play it out. But I'm just going to stick with the middle on that because it's kind of cool. Um, you see, this is my slow computer. Let's just get that back up there. Reset it to the center. There we go. Give it a couple of seconds. So then what I like to do is um, I'll put an insert effect on. Remember I told you when we were doing the silent thing that I like to use distortion? Same applies for this. Um, the, the sign shape is really good for this kind of sound. Again, if you put it on like maximum wet and maximum dry to start with, it didn't drive to start with. It's like super gnarly, way too gnarly for me. But then what you can do is you take it all off, like the, just the dry wet mix, and then start to add a little bit back in. Let's just pitch this down. So that sounds pretty cool. Um, and then the final thing, I don't really use filters on these sounds, by the way. Like a lot of people really go over the top with the um, the screamy filter thing on here, which you can do. I mean, it sounds really cool, but I think you can actually get far more uh, far more usable sounds just from doing oscillations of the wavetable positions and form and intensities that you need to. You don't actually need to put the filters on. Me personally, anyway. I mean, like I guess it swings and roundabouts, but for me personally. <laughs> I prefer the sound to be cleaner. Um, what I normally do is I'll put a, uh, a tube distortion on uh, the end. Again, you can, I mean, any of these is good. Uh, I'm gonna go with classic tube. And same thing, I'm gonna push the drive all the way up, the wet all the way up. Um, and then I'll sort of mix back from that. So really all that's doing is, is doing a volume booth. Let's try the Teletube. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, one of the best parts about Massive is again I believe it's kind of like an afterthought really um, is the dimension expander uh, this plugin is so good that I actually got in touch with Steve Duda who is a legend by the way like I like Steve Duda is like one of the greatest people to know for exactly this reason I got in touch with him and I said I really I love the dimension expander is there some way that you can root sounds through massive to use the dimension expander and he said no there isn't and I was like oh crap uh, and he was like I could build you one and I was like really and he's like yeah 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 I'll, I'll have a go at it 
So I was expecting to wait like two or three weeks or whatever. Uh, 15 minutes later, he sent me a fully coded dimension expander uh, as a VST. So I'm going to show you that in a little bit. You can actually download it from Steve's website as well if you go into the XF. Uh, XFR, um, XFER website, he's got a selection of free downloads and you'll see this one with a little chicken on it which is my Funk Farm logo because he built it for me uh, and you can actually download it on there for free but basically like the Dimension Expander is, uh, is in my opinion the thing that gives dubstep basses and stuff their sound you select the size, I'm just going to leave it on the, on the normal sound and basically you can turn it up And it's kind of like a real quick sort of phased delay thing that like you can hear it kicking in when you lose the notes. And that's the thing that gives the sounds their width. Which I think is just brilliant. And then the final step is, um, is putting the bottom end in it because that's a very top endy kind of sound. So what I always do is um, uh, you can actually you go down to the, uh, the the plugin, and if you right click it, if you right click or control click, uh, here we go. You've got group. So if you just hit group, and it puts it into an instrument rack like this, then you select the uh, the uh, th the display that shows you the instruments that are in the rack, and then I go to uh, uh, Ableton's operator synth and they've just dropped that in there and now you can hear there's a sine bass underneath it which is just replicating the notes so let's just uh, put that in now if you don't want it to be tempo um, if you don't want it to be tempo uh, mapped um, what you can do is you can set the LFO to um, to run free, and then you can set up a uh, a macro to control the uh, the rate of it. So if you pick a bottom end that you want the rate to be like the slowest you want it to be, And then if you turn the knob all the way up, pick the fastest that you want it to be. And then now you can just control that with this. And that's your basic uh, dubstep screamy bass. But I will quickly show you before I sign off on this. Uh, if I turn off the dimension expander and then go into the uh, go into my VSTs. Um, yeah, so hang on, that's my audio units VSTs. Uh, and if you go to uh, custom, which are the ones that uh, I've had built for me. Actually, I've actually got a number of these uh, little things, but um, but the Dimension Expander is by far the uh, the best and the most usable. I've got two of Steve's in here actually. There's another one which is called Blazer, which uh, which he built for Chris Lake, um, which I'll show you again later on. But uh, but yeah, if we drag the Dimension Expander onto the end here, and you'll see I've got this little chicken here. Um, and then basically if you, uh, I'm just going to drop this on top of the massive, uh, I'm actually going to drop this on top of the massive uh, channel uh, in the plug-in thing rather than, um, rather than on the end. Uh, turn it on and there you go. Exactly the same effect except Steve's goes way way bigger than the massive one does. So you can actually get more of a kind of like stadium kind of effect on it. But yeah, so there you go, dubstep wobble. Excellent.